all of the things that's been going on in the Olympics as of right now. So one thing that I found out like about 30 minutes ago was that there are already teams that have qualified for a spot in the Olympics, or like in the final phase of the of the tournament, right? So in Group A, both um, Canada is the only team that has qualified for a spot. So, and for some, and the way that it works is that there's a point system for these standings. So if you win, you get two points. If you lose, you get one point. So Canada has four points, and I believe like the team that reaches four points first ends up being the team that you know qualifies so the two teams that get to four are the two teams that are going to be qualified for the spot so canada has four points australia has three and so now you know you just have to win you just have to win the the next game if you're australia and you already qualify because spain also has three so you know it's pretty close in that department for Germany and France, they are the only teams that have advanced in Group B because they're the only teams there that have four points. And finally, for Group C, the United States and South Sudan are the two top teams in the running, but they have not, since they haven't played yet, there's, like, we cannot tell exactly who is going to take that spot and who is going to, because... The way I see it, only one team is going to qualify from Group C. Then it's going to follow the same uh, pattern as Group A is doing right now, where it has one dude in f one team in four, another team in three, another team in three, and then finally the bottom feeder at two. And that's sort of the point system that I figured out in like just a few minutes ago. So those are the qualifying teams. And as I you know as I said to before, Germany they ended up beating the uh the brazilian team in this recent matchup they won 86 to 73 and you know since they already qualified there's really no need to talk about point differential in this one but obviously you know their point differential was going to increase dramatically after this huge win so i believe like their point differential it moved from all right so they had a plus 20 point differential before playing this game and they won by 13 so that would mean now they have a plus a plus 33 point differential which is you know it's very impressive right but that would also mean that brazil now has one of the lowest point differentials at minus 24 25 i believe yeah because they had minus 12 in the previous after the previous loss and now they just added minus 13 more so that is about minus 25 in the point differential and so it really it's right now they're just fighting for glory and they aren't really fighting for anything special because you know they've already been eliminated which is unfortunate for them and i mean there were it's it's to be expected i mean brazil doesn't really have the same amount of talent as germany has or has or as France has in their bracket. So, like, they've kind of, they were kind of, like, doomed from the start because of their, because of their standing. Similar to how it seems like Puerto Rico was doomed from the start because Puerto Rico is looking like one of the weakest teams in not just the entire Group C standings, but in the entire Olympics period. Like, losing, but they're, they're almost about to lose by 40. This is really bad. And to make matters worse, their point differential is already in the minus 11. Like, that's that was their point differential before even going into this game. Now they're going to be just awful. Like, this is going to be terrible for them. Now, this is this also really helps... This matchup also really, really helps Serbia get back into the race and taking the next spot for the tournament in the group c standings because as the group c standings are at, um are right now it's america south sudan puerto rico and serbia right so that would mean that with this plus 40 point differential if they win and south sudan loses they're going to go ahead and advance into the, you know, into the second seed all the way from being down in the first seed. But I'll talk about that a little bit more in the next segment 
after I, I believe, yeah, in the fourth segment, once the game finally concludes, because now I'm just like, you know, spitballing right here. So for Germany, France Wagner played very, very well, ended up getting 17 points, four rebounds and three assists. And he's been playing phenomenally for Germany throughout the entirety of the Olympic tournament. Same with Dennis Schroeder. Everyone knows that Olympic Dennis Schroeder is a lethal weapon, and they also know that Dennis Schroeder on, you know, in an NBA team can also be a lethal weapon. So it's like he's he's one of the few players on the German team that has, you know, NBA experience. Same with Franz Wagner. They both have NBA experience. And Schroeder played a very efficient 20-point game. He had he was 7 for 13 from the field, was able to get 6 assists on top of those 20 points, which is always great and always what you would expect from a point guard he did get five turnovers however but aside from that doesn't really matter because his his production to the team was more than enough to grant them that win and it really it's like since they already qualified it's like you know it's really like there's it's almost like no point in talking about the rest of the games coming up against germany or the rest of the games coming up in that specific bracket because of like how the standings are and just you know and the fact that everyone everyone in that group has has already qualified and it's doesn't it doesn't really seem like it's really interesting anymore because i mean like it's really not like we already know what team is going to advance and what team is not going to advance because i mean even if they play against each other I'm not at, like, let's say Germany and France play against each other, because that is probably going to be, like, the only matchup that's really worth interest, that's really worth seeing after this, the results of this, you know, of these games ended up playing out. So it's, like, it, it's it's kind of unfortunate, because that's how, oh, wow, okay, Puerto Rico just, just took a wild shot. But aside from that, it's, like, there's nothing... In this group, Group B, it's basically done. Like, there's nothing else to talk about. But Group A and Group C, those two are going to be, like, the groups that I'm going to be um, focusing on a little bit more. Because it seems like, again, like, I don't think anyone would really want to listen to me talk about these games that don't really mean that much. But... I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. If I should just, you know, focus on recapping every game or only focus on recapping some of the games that end up, you know, happening in the, like, that end up being important, you know? And speaking of importance, there is a new tweet coming out. Woes just dropped some knowledge, so I'm just going to go ahead and read what the what woes just tweeted out because i'm actually very curious myself All right, so I just found out Luke Kennard has agreed to a new one-year $11 million contract to stay with the Memphis Grizzlies, and I'm kind of surprised that it's just for, you know, one year. I would have expected him to want to sign, you know, a multiple, like a year, like, well, like a contract worth multiple years as opposed to just, you know, this one-year contract for $11 million, but this is like, you know, this is this is a pretty big deal because Memphis is going to be a like they're looking to be a playoff team, right? And they're trying to compete against some of the toughest you know, some of the toughest things in the like they're in one of the toughest conferences. That's what I've been trying to say. I don't know why I'm fumbling so badly, but they've been in one of the toughest conferences in the nba and so they they're gonna need like all the floor spacing that they can get especially now that they have zach ide on the team just you know because like you know you have to do that i mean it doesn't make any sense to it doesn't make any sense not to do that and honestly like i kind of like this move like i for memphis it's always good to like make sure you retain your shooters but at the same time i would have really liked to see them you know sign them for more 
and that was a very wild shot but okay so that's basically all that i have to talk about in this segment so yeah the german game that was you know it was a blowout from the start the game was never close so i just don't really feel the need to talk about it all that much so now we will go ahead and go into the second segment where i talk about the fiba basketball mvp yeah there is a list of players that are in the running to win the FIBA basketball MVP and I'm just going to talk about those players that are in the top 10 and maybe go on a little bit more of some of the players in like maybe you know the top 25 something like that so I'm just going to go ahead and talk about that right after this short break so be sure to stay tuned and I'll be right back I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Everybody in the 